God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to His side. Hello, my name is Pastor James. I want to welcome you to the last day, the last week of this great campaign, campaign Love Your Neighbor As Yourself. Today, we'll be looking at praying one for another. And our text is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. There he says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people for kings and for those in authority. Why? That we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Today marks the end of this year's campaign. You definitely must have made one or two commitments to God and his people. The object of today's discussion is to find out how to assist each other in the area of prayer. Let us establish some biblical foundation for this. Samuel said, moreover, for me, God forbid that I should sin against God in ceasing to pray for you. For Samuel, it's a sin not to pray for Israel. First Samuel 12:23 And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before, Job 42:10. These were friends that misunderstood him, called him names, and yet he prayed for them. And because he prayed for them, God turned his captivity. We need to pray for families. Families need prayers. One reason families are collapsing in our day is because no one is standing in the gap to pray away the attacks of the powers of darkness against homes. I remember the story of this couple. For a whole one week long, they were quarreling. People tried to intervene. Even their pastor came to their home. The whole house was in tension. Nobody could intervene because they wouldn't listen. But one of the member of the family, the brother of the wife, decided to come to my office, use my office for an all-night prayers to pray for this couple. And would you believe what happened? The following day after his prayers, they reconciled without anybody's intervention. That just shows you the power of prayer and the need for us to pray for couples. The devil hates married people because the Bible tells us two are better than one. One we put 1,000 to flight. But two, husband and wife, we put 10,000 to flight. Can you see the multiplying effect? The devil hates people coming together in marriage. But then, there are not many people willing to pray for families. Individuals need prayers. You need to pray for people. There are people who have moved from mountain top to ground zero. Why? Because of the powers of darkness afflicting them, afflicting their businesses. We need people to pray for people, for organizations like churches, places of work, for kings, for rulers, for leaders, even for nations. We live in a world of conflicts. It's under the prayers of the saints that will bring peace upon our land. Others need your prayers if they are going to be all that Christ wants them to become. They need your prayers. This is a call to a greater Christian maturity to stand in the gap for others. Paul has this to say. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. This is Paul. Always praying. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will, through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, 
growing in knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have endurance and patience and giving joy, full thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. You know, from this passage, we, we can come up with six prayer points that you can pray for anybody. All of us need these prayer points. So the question of, I don't know what to pray about for anybody, does not arise because I can show you from here what you can pray for. This is just six out of so many things you can pray for your friends, your neighbors about. Number one is pray that they know the will of God for their lives. That's Colossians chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. Number two, pray that they do God's will in their lives. That is verse 10 of a passage in consideration. Number three, pray that their lives bear fruit. The life of an obedient Christian will bear fruit. Pray that they will obey God. They will obey his word. That is in verse 10b. Number four, pray that they will have a growing relationship with God. That is 10 C. Then pray for power in their lives. We all need power. Power to overcome evil, to overcome temptation, power to destroy the works of darkness. Number six, pray for them to have the right attitude. That is, maintain a positive, thankful, and joyful attitude. That they will be sought and light to those around them. Matthew chapter 5. 13a and 14a. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And the best way we can really be the salt and light of the world is through praying the power, the light of God into people's lives so that the darkness that is surrounding them can be dispaired. We all can be like Paul. He said to the Ephesians, I make mention of you in my prayers always. Ephesians chapter 1 15 to 16. To the Philippians, Paul said, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for you, I always pray with joy. To the Romans, he said, God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son, is my witness. Constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray now, at last, by God's will, that the way may be open for me to come to you. Romans 1, 9 to 10. Prayer is the key that unlocks all the storehouse of God's grace and power. You know, this great man, a mighty man, a mighty prayer warrior once said, he said, Satan laughs at our toiling. He mocks at our wisdom, but he trembles at our prayers. May the Lord anoint us to pray more. May the Lord help us to be willing to bear one another's burden in the place of prayer. May the Lord bless you. Today we'll be looking at why is prayer needed in the achievement of life goals? Number two, what are the factors that sometimes militate our resolve to pray? Why should we pray for our friends? And finally, what are the factors that make prayer potent, make prayer powerful? God bless you. I pray that your life will never be the same again. You will grow in faith. You will grow in knowing God. You will move from here to greater heights and you will do exploits for God. That is God's will for you and that is my will for you. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. God will make a way Where there seems to be no way